Hello! For today's Read Aloud, we are going to be reading some books about some people who travel back in time to see the dinosaurs and some dinosaurs who travel to the future to meet some people. So um, I think this will be a really fun one. The first book we're going to read is called We're Back! A Dinosaur Story by Hudson Talbot. And this was one of my favorite books when I was a kid. I had a copy of this and I used to read it all the time. It says, Hi, my name is Rex. One day, as I was beginning a little afternoon snack, I noticed a small but tasty looking creature approaching me. Oh, he says, um, excuse me, sir. Hi there, sir, he began. My name is Vorb, and I'm with Megamind Incorporated. We're test marketing a new ultra mega vitamin on your planet. It's called Brain Grain. <laughs> it's an IQ enhancer in, reg in regular or mint flavor. <laughs> So the word IQ means like how smart you are. So this pill is going to make this dinosaur smarter. I would have caught him if he hadn't been showering me with brain grain. Little did I know that my life would never be the same. A weird feeling jolted me. I began to utter strange but somehow meaningful sounds. Rawr! Huh? Where am I? Whew. As I was saying, Vorb panted, we're testing a new Megamind product. And for the lucky volunteers, there's an extra special bonus prize. I wondered what he meant. Then he added, and free snacks. I said yes. The other folks on board were surprisingly friendly considering my years of terrorizing them. I was amazed at how easily they accepted the new me. It wasn't long before we became a new us. Together we studied geography, math, penmanship, reading, and all sorts of things. Then one day Vorb came in and announced... You've passed. Thanks to you all, our research has been a success, and now for your prize. It's a trip to the 20th century. There you'll meet our favorite contact person, Dr. Miriam Bleep of the Museum of Natural History. What an adventure awaits you. Just getting to the museum should be the thrill of a lifetime. Thrill of a lifetime, I ask. So there is Dr. Miriam Bleep. There is the Splashdown Point, the Museum of Natural History. But before there was time for Vorb to reply, we were suddenly plunging downward in the dark towards the water. Whoa, look at that. We all sat in silence as we putt-putted towards our destiny, wondering what sort of welcome we would receive. Excuse us, sir, we asked of the first little creature we saw. Could you tell us how to get to the Museum of Natural History? You're looking for the start of the parade. You're looking for the start of the parade? Just keep heading uptown. Traffic's light because it's a holiday. Great costumes, he said. So he doesn't think that they're really thinks that they're part of a parade. Costumes? Parade? Well, we didn't want to seem like out-of-towner, so we nodded, thanked him, and marched on. We walked and walked until someone waved at us and shouted, Quick, get in line behind the Wichita Falls marching band. They're about to start. Perhaps this is some kind of welcoming ceremony, we thought. The crowd loved us. 
but they did call out curious questions such as, where are the motors and how many guys are in there? We simply smiled and waved and acted as if we knew what they were talking about. Suddenly, I caught sight of what I thought was a familiar face. Say, isn't that old Wargle, I exclaimed? That Allosaurus who used to hang out by the tar pool? Maybe he can tell us where to get a bite around here. So he thinks this is real, but this one is actually a float in a parade, as you can see. Hey there, big fella. Long time no see. Put her there, partner. And then what are they all yelling? They're all saying, hey, stop, whoa, hold it, hey, hey. That was my first mistake. Ooh. Panic struck. They're on to us, guys. Let's get out of here. I don't get it. Where's Wargle? Head for the museum. They're real. Ah! Let's get out of here. Now it's on the front of the newspaper. Monsters hit Midtown. Uh -oh. They didn't understand us. Um, excuse me, folks. Do you know the way to the museum? Somehow we found our way to the museum and not a moment too soon. Dr. Bleep! May we come in, I said, as Dr. Bleep opened the door. Sure, but hurry, replied Dr. Bleep. I have a plan, but we'll have to act quickly. I can't hold them off for long. Now listen carefully. I want you to act like dinosaurs. That shouldn't be too hard, she said kneeling down and baring her teeth like this and when i say freeze hold perfectly still as she got up from her demonstration we timidly tried to imitate her pose she hurried towards the door then turned and yelled freeze the door creaked open and the stomp of combat boots echoed through the halls we didn't move a muscle So you see, officer, I heard Dr. Bleep say, the only beasts we have are these models in our diorama. The creatures you speak of have been extinct for a hundred million years. I don't know who you saw in here. Perhaps it was a publicity stunt for some movie or for the Inquirer. So she's tricking them. They're pretending to be just very still. They probably went out this way. Come back and see us again when you have more time. Yes, I'm sure you like dinosaurs. You were only doing your job. I must go now. Goodbye and good luck. Dr. Bleep, I said, thank you for saving us. But is it too late to get out of this bonus prize? Not having a good time, she replied. Aren't you just a little curious about this new world? There's so much to learn from each other if you could stay a while and work with us here at the museum. But you don't have to decide right now. Why don't you sleep on it? We've got your beds all made. After we were settled in, Dr. Bleep opened a book. Once upon a time, she read, in the early Paleozoic era, there was a little trilobite who wanted more than anything to walk on land. Go for it, I muttered. We've come this far. Why not? That's a really cool, that's a really cool story. Okay, the next one we're going to read is called Time Train by Paul Fleischman, illustrations by Claire Ewart.
Where to? The ticket seller asked. Dinosaur National Monument, Miss Pym, our teacher replied, in Utah. That'll be Gate 44, the Rocky Mountain Limited. The man counted out eight tickets. What takes you out west? A field trip for spring vacation, I spoke up. We want to learn all about dinosaurs. The man's eyebrows jumped. In that case, you want the Rocky Mountain Unlimited, Gate 44A. And hurry... We just made the train as it pulled out of New York. By the time we reached Philadelphia, we knew we were in for an unusual trip. So it's already starting to look like they're, the train is taking them back in time. It's already starting to look like the old days. In Pittsburgh, we picked up some new passengers. Soldiers. In Ohio, Miss Pym demanded to speak to the engineer, but he was busy. So there, look at all the buffalo, and they're not even around anymore. They're mostly extinct. At night, the conductor handed out blankets. In the morning, we noticed that the weather had changed. And what else did they see out the window? A woolly mammoth. Those are also extinct, of course. Dinner that evening was surprisingly good. Whoa! The dinosaur! By the next morning, the weather had warmed up quite a bit. That afternoon, we got off at our stop. We couldn't find the Green River Motor Lodge, so we settled for a patch of dry ground nearby. It's a dinosaur footprint. In the morning, we saw our first dinosaur. Emily and Alexander decided to do their project on it. The rest of us fixed scrambled egg for breakfast. Look at the size of the egg that they're scrambling. Oh my goodness. I decided to study stegosaurus eating habits. Every afternoon we came back to our camp and went swimming or played ball. Stuart got some great photographs of the area. <laughs> we were having such a good time that we hardly noticed the days passing. Then one morning, Miss Pym heard a whistle. It was the Rocky Mountain Unlimited making its return trip. Back in New York, my father met me at the station. See any dinosaurs, he joked. One or two, I replied. So, your activity today is going to be either creative writing or creative drawing, depending on the grade that you're in. So, our kinders and some of our students in grade one can do it as an art activity. And for those of you who can write a few paragraphs, you're going to do creative writing. So you have two choices. You can either write a, a little story about going back in time and visiting the dinosaurs, or you can write a story about a dinosaur coming into our time and the things that could happen. So we don't want it to sound just like the books we just read. We want it to be an original story with that as the basis. Now if you're just drawing you can draw a picture about either of those things so one or the other. I'd love to read your short stories or to 
get a copy of the pictures so you can always email them to me and if you want I can even share them on this page. So I hope you enjoy the dinosaur activity, time traveling, dinosaurs and people and uh, I can't wait to see what you can come up with for stories and drawings. Have a great day everybody.